Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to finish the code Anna and if you haven't seen the first part of this video I highly recommend to do that because this will literally make no sense if you don't watch part one obviously. So we left off with the outer shell of the coat being done so we are going to finish the facing and the outer collar. So the outer collar and the collar band are getting stitched together just as the inner collar as well which is why I'm brushing over it kind of because it's the same thing. The seam allowance gets ironed into the collar band as well and then we're gonna put the facings together. So you saw me putting the front facing and the back neck facing together. Make sure to have the back neck facing laying in the right direction which would be the shorter curve up and then on the right and left sides of that the front facings and the facing basically also gets connected to the outer collar just as the outer shell got connected to the inner collar so you just want to cut into the corner to be able to actually turn the pieces then you want to align the notches and just pin everything together accordingly start from the collar notch over the gorge line over the corner and the back neck facing to the other side just as you already did for the outer coat When those pieces are connected, you want to iron also the facing and the outer collar the same way as you did with the outer shell already. So I'm cutting into the respective spots, open the gorge line up, cut down the corner and then iron all of the seam allowances into the collar band just to stabilize it a bit further. And that's already the last step before connecting the facing and the outer shell of the coat. So you want to lay down right sides facing up your coat and then we're going to put right sides down. So we're going to put right sides together the facing onto the coat. We want to align all of the notches. So in this case the center back notch we want to align the curve of the collar and then just pin everything together accordingly. These pieces should fit together just perfectly and there will be at the gorge line this spot where you have to kind of like open up uh, the seam but which should be easy because you already cut into that seam so it should just open up pretty easily so that you can just form a straight seam from the label to the collar as you just saw me do that and you can just simply stitch over that. So once you reach the hem, you will find that the front is actually a tiny bit longer than the front facing. That's because the hem facing is already attached into the piece in the front, which is why you're going to find the notch that indicates the fold for the hem and just fold it up, then get your hem of your front facing and pin it to the hem facing of your front piece. This sounds a bit complicated, but I guess if you're doing it with me, um, then it should be a bit easier than just hypothetically thinking about it. And you want to just align all these pieces together so that in the end, you're going to have a continuous line all the way down to your hem that you want to stitch and then stop stitching where the seam starts and then start stitching behind the seam, I guess, again and work your way up. Once you reach this specific line that I was talking about where you have to spread open your seam allowances, you can just simply stitch over it, bar take maybe into that seam so that it really stays put as we're going to have to like pull a bit on it once we're actually turning the whole piece over and you continue stitching over the center back to the other side and work your way down to the hem again. And then just stop right where the seam for the facing and the hem starts, turn the seam allowance around and then finish that small corner for the hem itself. After that was done, I went ahead and also stitched the front facing and the hem together. So that small seam that is now left open that we turned up before. Before we can go ahead and turn the whole coat over, we want to cut down the seam allowances at a few specific spots, mainly the curve 
curves in the label and the color and then also I'm not sure if I'm doing that as well but you can if you have thicker material also cut down the seam allowances on your collar and then I start turning over the whole coat and I am specifically putting the ditch of the seam in a specific direction so starting from the hem of the front piece you want to have the ditch of the seam visible on the facing up until the notch where the label begins then you want to turn it over so that the ditch of the seam is actually visible on the front piece all the way over to the other side of your label and then where the label notch is all the way down to your hem you want to have the ditch of the seam at the facing visible again because that way once everything is folded correctly you won't see the ditch of the seam at all anymore that's just a small little professional tip that i can give you and that's what i'm doing for all my coats and it works out really really well So I'm trying to be a bit ahead of my schedule, which is why I am trying to produce a bit more. And that's why you're going to hear my voice actually be a little bit different. I was having no voice in part one and I was just regaining my voice when I was recording the next part that is following. So don't be shocked or whatever. Like I am fine now, as you can hear me right now. And yeah, that's just a little disclaimer so that you're not thinking like, whoa, what's going on here? Okay, I just quickly wanted to say something. Um, I was thinking about how to continue with um, videos like this. And I came to the conclusion that it would be the best to have like an assortment of videos that generally show how to make things. Not specifically to that pattern, but the order of things and you know how to put lining into place for example for this video it stays the same from jacket or coat to another design you know it's always the same thing that you have to do generally speaking of course there are some minor differences in designs and maybe one has a slit maybe one doesn't for example but generally speaking the video that you're gonna see now or like the part of the video that you're gonna see now is general knowledge on how to put lining into any jacket or any coat. So my idea or how I would like to go about this is basically have this video as baseline. So I will be referring from now on to this video if you want to put lining into, you know, your coat or your jacket and then have other videos that show other specific things like, for example, a slit, how to put that in place and refer you to that because I will have to explain again and again how to put in the same things, how to make the same things, which just doesn't make sense in the time I spend on it. And then also it's repeating the same things all the time, which is also unnecessary. So I came to the conclusion to just have, you know, these general videos on how to do things that you can use the knowledge from and apply it onto your designs or onto, you know, whatever you were doing. That's the plan. So this video that you're gonna watch or that you're already watching is how to put in a lining, generally speaking, into jackets and coats. So let's roll it. So the first thing that we're gonna do with our lining is take our back lining. And since you cut this on fold, you already prepared it a tiny bit because we want to iron a fold in the center back. Now the center back is not the real center back, but it's like a new center back, I would say. So it's a fold line and we want to like iron the fold in nicely. On the pattern itself, you're going to find something called the stitching curve. The stitching curve is basically just a template because you want to stitch this, top stitch this right on top of the fold right here. There is one on the lower edge as well. Right here, it's a bit longer. So you just want to go right where the real center back is and top stitch on either end. You're going to find the stitching curve on the pattern. Now, the next thing is pretty much the same as for the outer coat. You also want to 
put your shoulder seams together just like you did with the outer shell and then you want to put the dividing seam and your sleeve together. So the only special thing that is different to the outer shell is in one of the two sleeves. Now one of them pick either, it doesn't matter, left or right, you're just gonna sew together just normally and then the other one you're gonna want to start sewing from either end but then stop like five centimeters after and leave a hole in the sleeve. You can either do this in the dividing seam or you can do that in the side seam. Doesn't matter, you just need um, a hole in your sleeve lining so that in the end you can turn around your whole coat through that hole and machine manufacture the hem of your coat without having to hand sew anything. So that is basically the industrial way of making a coat or finishing a coat up and that's exactly what we're gonna do as well. So I'm gonna do it in the dividing seam. As I said, it doesn't matter, you can also do this in the side seam. So when you're ironing the sleeve with the hole, you also want to iron the seam allowance of the hole to one side. That's easier in preparation for closing the hole as we're gonna top stitch in the end. So this is just the easiest method and the other sleeve we're just normally gonna iron to one side. So now we want to grab our lining front and back and our sleeves and put the sleeves into the armholes. Now the same thing as with the outer shell, the sleeve dividing seam indicates that it goes to the back and the front has a notch on both the body and the sleeve. So once the lining is finished, you want to grab like any cotton strip that you can find. This is just scrap material that I have lying around. You want to cut four strips that are 7 to 10 centimeters long. And these strips are going to be used to hold the lining inside the coat. So basically, since the lining is made out of this very slippery material, usually it's rayon or acetate, you easily just take out the whole sleeve lining when you take off your coat. To prevent this, you're gonna sew these four like kind of safety strips, I guess, onto two specific spots in each sleeve. One goes down here, so under the arm, you wanna sew this onto the seam allowance, and the other one goes up here at the shoulder, just where the seam is, also on the seam allowance. It doesn't matter if you put right sides together or wrong and right side or whatever, you just want to fix this at this spot on the lining. So just bar tag a few times over it. Okay, so now that the lining is fully prepared, we're gonna take our coat. So to put the lining in place, we're just gonna close the facing seam. It's one continuous line from one side to the other over the center back. So we're just gonna put right sides together. And you're gonna find a notch in the hem of your lining and that notch actually indicates the seam of the facing to the hem so this is gonna go right here so this here it's gonna go right on top of that seam And now remember that in the facing seam is one centimeter more length because we close the dart and put it in this seam right here. So you're gonna have to ease 
the facing into the lining, as you can see right here, in this area. So from shoulder seam to about half of the length of the front seam to the hem. Same thing on the other side. Match up the notch with the seam of hem and facing. Go to about half of the way and then start easing in the front facing into the lining. And then you can go ahead and sew from notch over the center back to the other notch. Okay, we can start to turn this all around. We're gonna have to do some cosmetic work now because it's not only these four spots in the sleeve point that we need to fix in place so that the lining doesn't come loose, but there are also a few other points. For example, the collar area at the moment gapes open like this. So we need to fix that. Basically what you would do is sew this by hand. You would go in down here and fix the two color seams together, like seam allowance to seam allowance. That's not what I'm gonna show you <laughs> because I have a better method, which is basically top stitching all around the color band area because that is what I would like to have anyways. So what I do for that is that I find some points, for example, the inner color point right here, or the center of the seams of the color band, like this, and then just a few more in between, like the shoulder. And now we're gonna top stitch right down here. And this is gonna be invisible, but it's gonna keep our color in place. Now the good thing with my uh, fabric is that you can literally not see the seam. Like it's somewhere here, but you don't really know where it is. So that's awesome. And on the inside, you can just slightly tell, but technically you could also fiddle the fur out and then you would also not be able to see the stitching line. So that's my fix for this. But of course, if you don't have fabric like this where you can make this invisible, you might wanna resort to hand stitching the seam allowance together just because you're sure then that there won't be any stitching line visible that you might not be able to match up perfectly. I also didn't match up mine perfectly, but whatever, you don't see it, so that's cool. So we want to prepare our hems. So we have two hems, one, the actual hem, and then the sleeve hem. For the actual hem and the sleeve hem, you both want to do exactly the same thing. So we're first of all going to iron the seam allowance up. The seam allowance is four centimeters plus another one centimeter of seam allowance that I put in. So I want to iron five centimeters up and I wanna do that in the sleeve as well once I get to it. So right down here in this corner, you can actually see that the hem like goes a bit smaller towards this side. And that's on purpose because I fitted the coat first and saw that this was like tucking weirdly. 
um, on this corner. So to prevent this, I just made the facing lay lower than where it's supposed to be laying at and that just made it disappear. So you always, before you do any of this, you always wanna put the coat on and see how it falls and then adjust your hem accordingly because you'd rather have a tiny bit of an uneven hem than one that is tugging and pulling upwards. And we're gonna do exactly the same for our sleeve hems as well. There's also an included four centimeters already in the sleeve. And then of course, one centimeter seam allowance. So we're gonna iron this five centimeters up. And I'm gonna eye measure this and then just uh, iron over top of that. So the first thing that you want to do is fix the sleeve hem into place. And I just went normally into the sleeve to match up my seams. I have two seams in the lining or like in the sleeve in general, the side seam and the dividing seam. And I want to make sure that these stay where they are. Like you don't want to twist your sleeve in any way. So I'm just going to fix this into place with a needle. And then I want to go in the hem, go in between lining and outer shell and grab exactly this right here that I just pinned. So the seam allowance of both these layers like this. And then I can go ahead and take out the whole thing just like that. And then you just want to match up everything and you can go ahead and sew these two together. Just like that and you can sew one time around. You're gonna do exactly the same for the other sleeve. Okay, so now that the sleeves are fixed into place, as you can see, I did the same thing. You can barely tell that there is a seam right there. Now we are going to fix these helping things like the strips into place. So we're gonna go down here from the hem again, and these things get now fixed like exactly the same seam allowance just on the outer shell so that we are gonna have the lining fixed into place. So now the only thing left to do is the hem and for the hem we are gonna go into the sleeve that has the opening from the lining side. So we're gonna go in here through the opening down to one side. So what we want to do here where the facing meets the lining, there is like a bunch of lining too much. We're gonna need this for the rest of the hem but for the corner right here. We can just simply like fold this nicely and then grab the inside and pull it through the opening. 
So if you're confused on what goes where, like I am right now, you can start at like the side seam because both pieces have the side, the same side seam. So we can be sure that these go together normally just at one centimeter seam allowance. And we're just gonna work our way approximately seven to 10 centimeters in front uh, before the facing starts. And what you want to do here, first of all, cut into the seam allowance of your facing so that it turns the corner better. And then you can just simply start sewing a diagonal. So you wanna start sewing right where you stopped sewing the lining onto the facing and then ease the lining into place in a diagonal manner. You can also start the diagonal line a bit further down and sew a diagonal until you are at the one centimeter seam allowance point again. And you're gonna work your way to the other side. And here on the other side, you wanna do exactly the same. So we're gonna cut into the seam allowance towards the stitching line on the facing and you might have to do that in the lining as well. And now we're gonna sew the hem shot. Since you already prepared the lining by folding it into a certain direction, you can just simply put your seam allowances to the inside. The lengths, by the way, of these two don't perfectly match up because they are uneven to shape the sleeve. And now you can very closely to the edge just stitch these two, top stitch these two together. And then we're done. As I did with my hem for my sleeves, I am also top stitching the hem for like the actual hem of the coat. But before I'm doing that, I'm actually going to iron the fold into the hem. And then I'm also, while I'm at it, ironing the front facing and lining seam and everything that just needs a tiny bit of a press so that everything looks neat and tidy. After I'm done with that, I am going to stitch down my hem trying not to, or being carefully not to catch the lining because it is folded over top. So you need to put that out of the way. And then I top stitched at three centimeters, I think, just to keep the hem facing into place. If not, you would have to also hand stitch your hem facing up at the seam allowances on the inside, like blind stitch it, which I didn't do because I already knew that I am going to um, top stitch the hem anyways. But that's just something, if you don't want the top stitches, you need to fix your hem facing into place before you close off everything. After I'm done with that, which is also the last step, is to put my buttons and button holes in. So I'm basically just copying out the placement of both of those from my front piece, making sure not to catch the pocket in the lower button, by the way. Uh, so you wanna keep that out of the way, and then you can go ahead and take any button that you like. I found these 1.2 centimeters wide buttons that I really like. Those were like brown ones that I just had lying around in my stack of buttons. And yeah, I used my buttonhole machine or like foot that I have for my machine to make buttonholes and hand stitch the buttons in place. 
and that's it already for today's video i hope you enjoyed i had so much fun making this coat and i'm honestly wearing it every day now because i am so in love with it the pattern the fabric everything honestly i so so love this one and i'm really proud of it so i hope you enjoyed today's video or and also part one of course and i hope that you're gonna have your own perfect coat if you haven't already go follow my channel click subscribe and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that i post i post on sundays and also give this video a like or interact with it in any way you would help me out so so much by just giving that little push that you can do um, so either write a comment or like it or do anything that you want and can everything is fine if you haven't already you should go and check out my insta and my socials in general links are down below in the description the handle is exactly the same as here on my youtube i am sharing lots of behind the scenes content of my life my cat shooting days anything that you can think of and yeah as i said link is down below i would so love for you to go check it out and leave me a follow there and you should definitely check out my etsy store that is the most direct way to support me and since it is black week starting tomorrow but whatever it started today already you should definitely go and check it out because i have sales going on and you definitely should not miss out on that so go ahead and check that out link is also down in the description below so thank you so much for watching i'm going to show you how the coat looks worn of course in just a second and i'm gonna see you next sunday bye guys Scheiße, nee, jetzt kommt man in Schatten. Okay, tschüss, okay. Jetzt schlitten. Jetzt wir gucken. Und jetzt soll voll süß sein. Ja, die Sonne scheint nämlich. Jetzt kannst du da lang rausgehen. Da lang, da lang.